Dennis Prager is roughly 147 years old, and um, apparently he still has a show. This is the guy, I mean, this is the Prager U guy. You guys know what Prager U is, right? Prager U is this um, basically right wing propaganda masquerading as objective history that they're teaching to kids. It's really nefarious, if I don't say so myself. So anyway, this guy, Dennis Prager, um, he apparently still has a radio show or a podcast or whatever the hell this is. Every now and then we like to check in on him. Shout out to uh, senior Media Matters researcher Jason S. Campbell, who gave us this glorious piece here. By the way, he's slowly morphing into a beluga whale, Dennis Prager is. So he's a gelatinous, pasty beluga whale. So anyway, let's hear, uh, hear what he's up to now. Well, you might as well say you, you, you could take Judaism too, Jude, which is what my religion is, which is 1,200 years older than Christianity. It, it poured ethical monotheistic ideas into old bottles. That's the way in which you, 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 you give people meaning in life. You give people meaning in life by putting ethical monotheistic ideas in new bottles okay what I, look meaning in life when you talk about meaning in life you're only going to find subjectively through trial and error what you feel like gives you meaning in life right and there's some tried and true ways that historically have uh, been able to provide people with that family friendship community those are like the go-to you know, helping others ends up making people feel better themselves. Like, these are the standard ones you go to. But outside of that, you also have, it's trial and error. Hey, what makes you want to get up out of bed in the morning? What do you want to do, right? It, it, that's how you figure out meaning. What he's talking about here is going to Judaism or Christianity or some religion and, like, deriving meaning that way. Look, I hate to tell you, but when you look at the people who derive the most meaning that way, what are they? Fundamentalists. Fundamentalists who end up having incredibly backwards-ass politics. Super backwards. Super backwards. So, that doesn't seem like a good way to get meaning. It, it poured ethical monotheistic ideas into old bottles. That's the way in which you, 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 you give people meaning in life. You take the forms they are used to. Judaism didn't ban sacrifice. It banned human sacrifice. All your pagan gods had human sacrifice. Did, are you okay with that? Any version of sacrifice is dumb, though. Whether you're doing human sacrifice is abysmal and unethical. But even, like, sacrificing a goat or a pig or whatever, like, nothing good comes of that, right? There is no, like, we are worshiping the sky god and giving him a dead goat. That's not actually doing anything, right? Like, if you're going to eat the goat, you could just <laughs> go through the process and then eat the goat. But don't pretend like, you know, Jigglypuff in space is going to fix your whole deal. Like, no, of course that's not going to happen. That's totally made up. Uh, you know, honestly, there's there's a lot deeper things to that. Yes, there were human sacrifices. Uh -huh. um, you sort of skate yes, over yes, that. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I said yes, there were. But if, if you want to talk about human sacrifice, let's talk about the Crusades. It was okay for the Christians to go around the world killing non-believers. That's a human sacrifice. Yeah, well, first it's not, okay. Okay, first of all, I don't understand. I've never understood why the Crusades were inherently immoral. M Muslims conquered Jerusalem. Wait, let me just finish, please. Muslims conquered Jerusalem which was under Christian rule, prior to that, obviously, Jewish rule, and they wanted to retake it. Why is that an equivalent of taking people and uh, sacrificing them to a pagan god? You might as well say that every country in the world is identical to child sacrifice, since it's embarked on occasion and wars that uh, sacrificed people. Is Hiroshima human sacrifice to you? Oh, man. <laughs> Look, I think this is a perfect example of how these guys think. I mean, he literally, he has the quote written here. Quote, I've never understood why the Crusades were inherently immoral. 
Yeah, and that's because you're not all that bright. <laughs> that's because your ideology blinds you to very obvious points. So he pointed out, hey, look, Muslims did their own crusade, and they took over all this territory. And so the Christians decided, well, what if we did our crusade and we took back all this different territory? And it's like, it's bad to do a violent crusade and threaten people to change their religion and their ideology at risk of getting their throats cut. Full stop. If you're doing it in the name of Islam or Christianity or Judaism, or fascism, or communism, any sort of violent crusade which mandates some sort of conversion. It's not good. It's not good. It's, it's incredibly fundamentalist by its very nature. Um, by definition, you're talking about something that's violent. It's authoritarian, of course, because you're not allowing for uh, freedom of differences and different ideologies and approaches to life, as long as they're not hurting anybody else. It's, uh, it's sort of like a mind virus. And we've seen this when it comes to political ideology, nationalism, fundamentalist religion. But see, when, when it's in his camp, he's like, I don't see what the problem is. Right, that's exact, that says everything we need to know about you, Dennis Prager. And this is one of those guys who harps away on the Judeo-Christian ethic. By the way, that's totally made up. It's a modern invention. Christians and Jews were sort of at each other's throats for a very, very long time. It's sort of a recent invention that there's this Western identity that puts together like, actually, Jew the Jews and the Christians are great friends. No, a lot of the original anti-Semitism was birthed out of Christianity, right? But they make it up, so now he lumps himself in with Jews and Christians, and I don't understand why the Crusades are immoral. Really? Really? It's Here, let me help you out, Dennis. It's immoral for the same reason you correctly recognize Muslim Crusades as immoral. Violently converting people, and... I mean, look, he... This explains his current politics, too, because he's a... He defends imperialism. He defends U.S. hegemony. So, I mean, this I shouldn't surprise anybody, but look, I love it when these guys tell you what they really think. Because they're easier to rebut when you accurately understand their worldview. That's the thing. Like, there are plenty of people in this political space who like to straw man their opponents and then knock down the straw man. You actually don't ever need to do that. Let them say what they really believe, accurately, you know, mirror that back to them, tell them what they really believe, and then disagree with that. Because I think it'll turn people off immensely if they really knew what their ideology is. And this is Dennis Prager, who's letting it all hang out. Letting it all hang out. Not sure why the Crusades were inherently immoral. That seems like a you problem, bro. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.